Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Mocha Lover, and thank you for joining me here at the start of the new campaign in Kaiserreich with the goal of having an American Caesar. So this isn't where we normally start, however I decided, you know what, let's just start in the game itself because right now I am trying to merge all my fleets together, but let's do a focus immediately. So we are playing as America right now, we could do US Navy, we could do War Department Expansion, which looks pretty good. And that's pretty much it. Or we could do the, introduce the Ghana Va Wagner Bill, or Wagner. So let's do this one first. While originally vetoed in 1932, the economic situation in America has deteriorated to the point where unemployment relief efforts are seen as the only way to prevent widespread collapse. President Hoover has indicated to the Democrats in Congress that this time he will not veto the Ghana Wagner Relief Bill. So like every campaign, we start off with a whole lot, not a lot of divisions. Cool. And yeah, we'll throw you under some dude, probably Edwin. Cool. Uh, what do we want to build? Since ooh, inner war bombers, close air support. I'm gonna go with close air support in this campaign. That sounds like a lot more fun. We're gonna need a, a lot of guns where we're going. Uh, let's do that. Actually, do that. thank you. And uh, we need some motorized as well. Let's uh, before we get to that too far. Let's make sure we get enough stuff here as well. So the reason why I didn't want to show you, uh, like what I chose, or I didn't even choose anything. But like the beginning where I usually start from new game and then go to something else such as the menu and choose America then go to the loading screen. That's just because I wanted to get to the Navy stuff quickly because the Navy stuff, well, it can sometimes take a long time. But we do want to make sure that the federal government does win in the end here. So we're going to be building up a lot of factories and we're going to need some divisions. Let's see, you guys are not bad. That's pretty good. I want to get quite a few you guys out. Oh, we can only have eight. That's not good. Panama Canal Division, that's four Marine Div Battalions, same exact thing, um, okay, National Guard Division, so those are pretty garbage, uh, go high, go low, and let's get go in, uh, just so we can get our ships together, one, two, three, four, that'd be nice, and United States in 1936, in 36, the U.S., is gripped by an unrelenting crisis, although able to avoid the horrors of the Weltkrieg, which allowed the prosperity to, or its prosperity, to continue well into the 1920s. German victory in the Weltkrieg, followed by the French and British revolutions, led to the Wall Street Crash of 1925. This sent the U.S. spiraling into the Great Depression and allowed the Berlin stock market to take its place at the forefront of the world economy. The election of Herbert Hoover in 1928, while initially promising, failed entirely to reverse the decline of the American economy, and by 36, the country had spent over a decade in the midst of the worst financial crisis it had ever seen. This fueled the rise of radical parties in America, from the far-left Socialist Party of America to the far-right America First Party. Hoover's contentious re-election by means of the House of Representatives in 1932, and the ongoing Great Depression means that these problems are unlikely to be resolved anytime soon. Many throughout the country fear the upheaval that would that would result should one of these extreme parties come to power, or should the depression continue unabated. God save America. Well, we'll see what happens. We've got a guy in mind who can probably save America. Now, they might not like the way we do things around here, but uh, yeah, we will save America one way or another. And fundamentally transform it for the rest of the world. So, the bill is reintroduced, with insurances made by the President Hoover, that unlike in 1932, this time he would not veto the bill. Democratic Senator Robert Wagner and Speaker of the House John Nance Gardner, uh, Cactus Jack, have reintroduced their unemployment relief legislation package. Many in Congress feel that the package does not go nearly far enough, while others wonder how far or how America, in the midst of a massive economic crisis, will possibly ever pay for it. The presence of senators from the AFP and the SBA will also complicates things immensely. Even Hoover's pledge, it's unknown if the Gardner-Wagner bill has a real chance of passing. No idea, but you know what? You don't know until you try, right? There you go. Cool. So, I want you guys to train if we can. I want y'all to train as, if you can as well. Come down here as well. Cool. We got ships, assassination of President Kerensky, and we're not going to have enough fuel to do everything that I want. We only have... Oh, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Cool. Let's let them go on. Yeah, we don't have a lot of fuel. So, voting rights and litigation councils. Uh, I don't really want to read this. This happens every game. Uh, if you would like to read this, go right ahead. So, a perfect arrangement. Very nice. Oh, a new ship, cool. Oh, a new sub, cool. Uh, oh boy. We got plenty of these things, so... We'll throw you guys... Uh, throw all the subs in Philly. There you go. And put everything else in Norfolk. Uh, I think that'd be pretty fitting. Unfortunately, like, in every bit, every campaign, um... You're gonna have to deal with the all the ships that America has. Now, I love American ships. But this... Oh, look at all that we got. We still got to make a lot. Ooh, we could lose North Carolina. I don't think we're going to lose Delaware, though, so... 
Early on builds up. Pietro Arango takes control of Russia. The Black Britain rules supreme. So a couple mods that we're using. Kaiserreich. Player of the Peace Conferences. Colored Buttons, Colored Events, and the Street t Transfer Tool Fall. State Transfer Tool Mod. I'm sorry, I cannot speak. We only have five mods on. So, long and read demand changes. As expected, the early challenges to the Ghana Wagner Bill have come from the AFP and SPA. Huey Long and his AFP senators have demanded a vast increase in the Social Security provisions that the bill provides, provisions most other senators say America could never afford. Jack Reed and the SPA may even say that the bill doesn't do enough to protect the average worker, particularly from exploitation by struggling corporations. Both parties have attracted a lot of media attention, adding to the general consensus of disorder and tension in Congress. Interesting. Well, that's just Congress. Y'all going to have a lot of tension, no matter what. And I'm sorry if my accent's coming out. It happens. Uh, Y'all come here. That's fine. Uh, we still doing that. Are we merging still? We are still merging. We actually have four tiers, which is really nice. The total charger, the people must reject this madness. Cool. So this is the part that I really wanted to maybe do off screen, just because it takes forever. But we can let time go on. Uh, King Edward VIII, no one cares. No one in America cares, so. Cool. We'll do that. Go, let's take off one, let's take off two. Good enough, take off one, and go eleven. Or twelve. It doesn't really matter. Still letting time go on, because uh, organizing this stuff takes forever. I do want to make at least one death stack, so we'll see what happens. A little bit of lag. Quite a bit of lag. Oh, God. What's going on? A little bit more lag. That's okay. Signatures break ranks. After weeks of negotiations, the a number of establishment senators have broken ranks over the coming vote on the Ghana-Wagner bill. Most notably, Robert Wagner, one of the bill's proposals who says he will not vote for the bill unless protections for federal unemployment insurance are re-added. Many of the Democrat and Republican senators are concerned about the influence of the AF of both you know, extreme parties, and claim that they will not vote for the bill if any concessions are made to either group. Though others say that not courting either group will make the passage difficult if not impossible. President Hoover will need to intervene in order to save the bill. So that's your support to Wagner and the establishment senators? Uh, yeah, let's, let's do that. Establishment senators, why not? That sounds like a good idea, right? Nothing could ever go wrong with that. Now oh, there goes Afghanistan, and then no one cares, though. Let them fight it out in that Rocket Mountain area. The Fifth Anglo-Afghani War. Anarchists elected in France. We kind of have Black Monday. We don't believe in Black Monday. The coalition ticket. Oh, God. So much to read. Uh, we need... There we go. So, coalition ticket. Uh, the 1936 election is looking to be one of the most contentious in American history. Many politicians within the upper circle of the Republican Democratic parties fear that a victory by the Socialist Party of America, or the AFP, would mean the end of America and the way American way of life. In order to avoid this, a plan has been proposed but within the halls of power to form a coalition ticket between the Repu Republicans and Democratic parties with the farmer, labor, Senator Floyd L Olson of Minnesota as a presidential candidate. This plan is unlikely to be popular with the lower-ranking members of the parties, but it may be the only thing that can prevent the radical parties from gaining strength. The coalition, if you can keep it, nah. Uh, long and read furious. Both the AFP and the SBA have reacted with fury at President Hoover's endorsement of establishment senators. They vow to sink the bill, claiming that the public is being deceived by a corrupt government which refuses to recognize the reality of America. While the parties have both gained a considerable boost in support from the base, Democratic and Republican fortunes have improved somewhat, and there's a feeling that both have a better chance of going into the next election, provided the bill actually passes. Cool. Now Black Money, it's America. Despite the political turmoil and ineffectual economic relief programs, it seemed to many as if the economy of the U.S. might finally be undergoing a slow recovery after the Great Wall Street Crash of 1925. Black Money has put an end to such hopes and has sounded the death knell for an already ailing economy. Republicans and Democrats have both pledged to fix the economy should they win the election, though through public the public confidence in them is rapidly waning. Both Reed and Long have rallied hard against the corrupt banking and political sectors, which they blame for allowing the crash to ever happen. This is just not our year. I'm not going to touch that because that looks bad. All I want to do is sit here and divvy up my uh, fleet. Which is going to go kaput as soon as a potential war breaks out. And I do want to make at least one of these fleets like death stacks, so. Crime spree sweeps the nation. As America spirals ever deeper into chaos, there's been a wave of crime throughout the country. Many of these criminals are getting sensational st news stories about their activities, especially gangsters like Don D Gillinger, John Dillinger, and the scandalous Bonnie and Clyde. Thankfully, the Bureau of Investigation has been working hard to catch these criminal scum and bring back some order to America. Of course, AFP and SBA have already begun attributing some of these crimes to Maud Klein and Robert Baronies, Robert, Robert Baronies, respectively. Stop right there, criminal scum. And the Austrian Empire withdrawals. What a sad thing to do. Mm, we could probably use more than just one battle cruiser. Go and grab a that one. There you go. 
Oh, uh, yeah, we don't believe in this fake news, Black Monday. It doesn't exist. Were you really in a depression if you get into it? Depression times two? Maybe. Cool, and now we've been hit. Hmm, big sadness. Big, big, big sadness. Um, you know what? I'm going to leave this one alone now. Let's take out just a little bit more. God dang, Kaiser. It's really quite a laggy mod sometimes. Okay, take one more of these. Take one of these and take uh, another one. There we go. Now, I know this is really unbalanced, but I like this. I like death stacking. I want to try to death stack it like the AI does, because AI just loves death stacking so much. It's ridiculous. Actually, you know what? We can do one more, just because I want to get up to 10. There you go, and there you go, and there you go. Cool. You guys. Now train. Under the guy, William No Halsey? Sure. Oh, what is that? Naval speed? Oh, more damage. Yeah, I don't get bold. So, it fails. After an incredibly close vote in Congress, the Ghana Wagner Bill failed to pass, and with several groups are declaring personal victory, protests have broken out in various parts of the country. There will be no relief for the American worker, and many have declared the government to be corrupt and dysfunctional. There will be considerable time for blame, but for the moment, the Hoover government's concerns must be turned to the growing violence throughout the American cities. Violence which is expected to only worsen in the months leading up to the election. Is this, like, are they, are they talking about 1936 or, like, 2020? Like, it, it seems like things are going going nuts. Um, all of that for nothing? Now nah, we good. All right, next up, we got to wait till the bell fails. Uh, all of that. Well, I guess we'll do that. Why not? Just so we can do demand repayments of the war debts. The UK incurred enormous war debt to us during the Valkyrie. The debt has been inherited by Canada. While it's unlikely Canada could repay it right now, demanding reparations or pay repayment will appease isolationists in Congress, whom we believe will join the political fringe, if not appeased. Well, good enough, whatever. All I want to do, like I said, is just sit here and work on my subs and my navy. Nimitz, ah, uh, gotta love me some Nimitz. And Japanese troops garrison Tianjin. It seems that economic woes have gone down hard in the legation cities, and they've decided to outsource much of their security operations to the Japanese to keep their economy afloat. While there's little we can do to stop them, there's been an uproar in the council over the shifting balances of power, and with calls for Japan not to abuse their position in the city. Well, we'll see what happens. There you go, make it easy on us. There you go. You know what? We could probably do it again. I wish you could just select all of these and then just like just half them. There we go. But it don't work like that, which kind of sucks. That's good. Uh, good, 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 good. All right, let's use up all the fuel. We don't need, we don't believe in fuel. Let's do it. Uh, very nice. There's something else I was going to say, but I forget. Let's see, we get 0.45. Paramilitary militias forming. So, with violence and instability sweeping the country, the AF, the extreme parties have begun to form various paramilitary militias, which they claim are necessary to protect the people. The AFP have called the group the Minutemen, while the SPA is Red Guard. Seen patrolling their strongholds and party rallies. These well armed and well equipped. There's so many events. God dang. Uh, military units have already engaged and scattered throughout extremely violent conflicts. We believe the paramilitaries are modified. Modifying civilian firearms and FBI's attempt to seize weapon uh, weapon stockpiles are too slow to stop gunrunners. This could turn very bad very fast. This ain't good. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, father Charles Coughlin's CBS radio broadcast. Three years ago today, the father began a weekly radio broadcast in America and now has an audience of over 50 million people. God dang. He is a raving anti-Semite who claims that the syndicalist revolution in France was formed fermented by the uh, <clears throat> Jew, and that the Berlin stock market crash is an international conspiracy of Jewish bankers, and somehow people will still tune in. His hate speech will not be tolerated by the church, and the Pope is expected to make a decision whether to ask the U.S. government to shut down his broadcast so that his hateful message cannot reach the public. Becoming a danger to the public. Um, that seems like to just divert more people away. I hate what he says, but I defend his right to say it. Uh, we, don't, we already don't have stability, so who cares? Cool. The restoration of demo democracy, huh? We'll see how long that lasts in Australia, Asia, as well as in U.S. Cool. So, okay. So, one thing I do want to let you know that with this path, we when we go down the American Caesar, I'm going to gimp or really hurt the Second American Civil War. I do not want to fight right now. Uh, three different enemies: the PSA, the AUS, as well as the CSA. I'm thinking that. I'm going to ultimately play as America twice in Kaiserreich. First time is this time with American Caesar, where we're going to assume that Douglas MacArthur just wants to go nuts and uh, take over the country. However, I will play again in the future sometime, and you hold me to this. Everyone who's watching, you hold me to this. We will go with 
American Cincinnatus, or Democracy Triumphs, in which we will have a 4-5 or five if we can go six-way Civil War. That'd be great. So the next time I play as the USA in Kaiserreich, not necessarily the AUS path or the CSA path, but the next time I play as the federal government, remind me that we're going to have like a five, six, seven ways of war. Because in this campaign, I want to make sure that we just fight like one main enemy. Just because we want to assume that MacArthur goes nuts. So more AFP members announcing congressional bids. While there's been a number of lawmakers from the America First Party who went this brief life, particularly in the South, the 36th election represents an unprecedented number of people registering for, to run for office under the banner of the AFP and just as many, if not more, nationwide, pledging to vote for them. St. Patrick Day's flood on March 16th, 36. Warmer than usual temperatures led to the melting of large amounts of snow and ice on the upper Allegheny and Monogalia rivers. The rivers and the tributaries had already overflowed the banks and were soon threatening the city of Pittsburgh on 17th, though. The waters reached the floodgate stage of 25 feet. Then overnight, heavy rain caused the water to rise even higher. And on the 18th, the water peaked at about 4 to 6 feet, 21 feet above the flood stage. This is the worst such disaster in the city's history, and local authorities have already requested federal aid. Uh, we must help the people. They have to help themselves. We must help the people. Why not? We can do that. Why not? Cool. So, yeah. I'm just thinking if we're just going to roleplay as if MacArthur really wants to take over the government no matter what happens. Because it, it makes the next campaign as a federal government much more uh, awesome if we stay true to our democratic paths if we end up in a four to five, six ways of war. If MacArthur just wants to take power and kills off like the, like the CSA or the AUS, then it's just like, why not? You know, he's American Caesar. He wants to be an American Caesar. Julius IV is elected. Who the heck is that? His Holiness? Oh, cool. Oh. Increasing radicalization. With the Democrats and Republicans fighting amongst themselves as usual, more and more Americans are feeling alienated from the traditional Big Two and are flocking to the uh, radical parties throughout the country. In these dark times, the distinction between genuine social reform and graft is hard to distinguish. Those under the radical banner and their political enclaves have received some social warfare, share our wealth donations from the AFP and international red aid from the SBA. The party machine of these two radicals groups utilizes mass media to a much stronger degree than either of than the Republicans or Democrats. It's looking more and more like the 36th election will come down to read or long. Let's hope not. Next up, so we want repayments, but let's do War Plan White. War Plan Y is a military action plan to contend with domestic violence or an insurgency. It's time to dust off the plan and deal directly with the growing threat of violence in America. Canada refuses, of course. The Canadian government has responded to the demand with a flat refusal. The debt, the debt they say, was never meant to be repaid until the home islands were of second appearance. Until they were retaken, as most was incurred by the UK, a government which is now in exile. Even so, the refusal has done its job and fired up the isolation elements of the American government. President Hoover's ge government has the support it needs at the cost of the relations with the Canadians. So be it. And we can't do anything with just 22 political power. Cool. So, the Stanley Cup. And 36. Two teams have made it into the 36th Stanley Cup Finals. The Toronto Maple Leafs making their sixth appearance, and the Detroit Red Wings making their second appearance and still hungry to win the first cup. With only a brief... God dang, what? we didn't even get there yet. What the heck? With only a brief interruption of the game, the first game of Detroit with demonstrators by the Socialist Party of America disrupting proceedings outside the stadium, the series has gone off without a hitch and captivated audiences in both countries who will take home the cup this year. Spoilers, Toronto wins. They vanquished Detroit in four game series for the Stanley Cup, bringing the Canadian team their fourth victory in the finals. Once again, the kid... With Kid Lion and Charlie Conacher, Harvey Busher Jackson, and Joe Primo has brought the Stanley Cup to Toronto. We'll win next year. At least we don't lose to uh, political power for that one. So, more SBA members announcing congressional bids. This is just like the one with AFP, so interesting. Oh my god. Special elections in Washington. Following the death of Senator Wesley Lloyd, a special election has been called in Washington to fill his seat. The frontrunners are the SBA activist John F. McKay and Democratic Congressman John Maine Coffey. That's awesome. Coffey? Polls is closed, and the winner appears to be. I'm sorry, if some guy's named Coffee, and this works for us. They so the Socialist Party loses power. I gotta go there. And uh, one in New Jersey, following Senator A. Harry Moore's resignation in order to run for governor, the special election has been called in New Jersey to select his replacement. The front runners are the Democrat John Merrill Milton, and or Gerard, Gerard, Gerald, and AFP spokesman Charles Lindbergh. Pulls the close, and the winner appears to be. Well, I think Milton is the man for the job. I think that'd be great. Cool, 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 cool. Um, yes, 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 keep training. We get plenty of naval XP. Good, that looks good. 36 still, basic machine tools. Uh, what else can we get? 36 naval stuff? Let's get some planes. Yeah, there we go. We need that one. Uh, we need planes, fighters. That's good. We got that over there. Tactical bombers we can probably not use. Oh, let's grab that one too. Cool. 
You know what? What if we did this? We really could use way more guns and artillery right now because I, we really need them. Trust me on that one. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. We're going to need a lot of guns. Tons of guns. Come on, make more guns. I know we're kind of in depression, but Panama pressures Costa Rica. The Panamanians have begun a small-scale military assault on the Kodo region of Costa Rica, which they've had a claim on for some time. We should threaten intervention to prevent this from turning into a full-scale war. We'll see what happens. How are you going to respond? How are you going to respond? And May Day riots. Oh, God. International Workers Day, or May Day. It's a federal, or no, it's not a federal holiday, but it's a holiday that the Socialist Party celebrates with numerous parades and speeches and has since its founding. Uh, generally, though, things are peaceful, though there have been confrontations with the police. However, this time things are more violent than normal. Clashes between the Socialists and the local police, backed up by the AFP, have occurred, occurred around the country. The question is, who's at fault? The socialists declared that things were peaceful until the police and the AFP goons arrived on the scene. Is this 2020? What the heck? The AFP is saying that the Socialists be began by assaulting ununionized workers, and have blurry photos they claim are guns of SPA were brandishing. SPA were at fault, they gained power. Uh, the police were at fault just because that makes it easier for everyone. I don't want anyone to get too much power, so Costa Rica requires their assistance. The disaster struck the otherwise quite low nation of Costa Rica when the ZKG crashed hard on the Berlin Stock Exchange just a few weeks earlier, dragging the nation to a hole out which it would be unable to recover on its own. To save them from complete collapse, the small nations requested us alone to bail out the ZKG. American sports? Yeah. And Panama backs down after hearing of American support for Costa Rica and not willing to escalate the situation to a full-blown conflict. Forces of Panama began to back down across the region. This is a victory for American diplomacy abroad. The Monroe Doctrine stands. Yes, America first, I guess. Even though we're not in the America first party. Um, yeah, America rules. Cool. That's what I like to hear or see. Yeah, very much. And South America, you know, I love that South America got a lot of love in Kaiserreich and still does. But uh, it looks like a mess. Anyways, but it looks fairly normal. It's normally a mess. I don't know. Minnesota, which has long been a bastion of the farmer labor senator Floyd Olson has finally flipped. Many people are turning away from the Governor Olson on the direction of the IWW and the SBA. Various unions have held rallies for the SBA in attendance for far outstrips their our ability to outshout them. Well, I don't like that. What the heck? Olson probably doesn't like that either. Well, that ain't good. Hopefully, we keep North Carolina. So, gridlock in, in Britain. So the time has come to dust off one of mil America's military color-coded war plans, this one meant for dealing with domestic disturbances and insurgencies. It cannot come a moment too soon, as violence is escalating in the areas where the AFP or the radical parties have been contending with local authorities for dominance. Minnesota and North Carolina are the two states where the violence is at its height, and at the moment we can only focus on our efforts in one place. So, Minnesota, that's Wisconsin. Minnesota, not really worth much. They get a little two and three quarters million and a civilian factory, and North Carolina has, oh, more population and more factories. So I'm going to focus on here. The Socialist Party of America gains political power. Uh, the American First Party loses it. Yeah. Um, what do we want? I think ultimately it's probably easiest to beat up Long if we're just going to fight Long himself to when he causes a civil war. Focus on the AFP. Focus on the SBA. Um, I really want to beat down the SBA because Michigan... Even Indiana and Ohio and Illinois and Wisconsin, they have a lot of factories. Down here in the south, though, they got some factories. It's not nothing to scoff at, but... Yeah, we'll probably focus on Minnesota. Cool. Below the National Guard. The violence caused by the support of the American First Party and the Socialist Party of America is only getting worse. We need to increase funding to the National Guard units and put them where their efforts will count the most. Which would be great. I really want to weaken the SPA. Really want to weaken them. Uh, here? Oh my gosh, what the heck? There's so many choices. So much garbage is here. Converted carrier hulls? Yeah, I don't believe in this garbage. Improved carrier hull. Now, that's not bad, probably. Well, oh my god, I said I had to say something. Oh. Uh, let's throw on some hangar spaces. Cool. And some anti-air. Nothing there. Right there, right there. Good, good, good. Well, we can make some of these bad boys. More carriers. Thank you, American Theater 1. Sure, why not? Uh, oh my goodness, please don't show me this garbage. Cool, alright, so we got improved subs, improved light ship hull, improved light ship hull. Uh, this one has a bigger number, so we're gonna get that cruiser hull. That's fine, y'all almost done anyways. Um, dreadnought. I'm not sure how old these dreadnoughts are, but, oh god. Super heavy battery? Oh, they are super heavy. What do we have? One? Level one? I really don't want to lower our speed by too much. 
Here, just go for some more anti-air. That'd be fine with me. Um, is that really worth it? We get 59.5, 52.5. Armor's not bad. We get less piercing, which I don't want. I don't want less speed either. So I think... I might just go with uh, more light attack. Five more light attack isn't bad. Get some more anti-air, though, because we're really going to need it. It won't lower our speed nearly as much, so... There you go. Whenever it happens, it happens. Cool. We'll get those planes or those ships done soon enough. Uh, U4. Death of Big Bill Haywood. So, today, one of the times of the industrial, or IWW, William Big Bill Haywood has passed away. His death marks passing up... Uh, of the torch. Elizabeth Gurley Flynn spoke at the funeral, saying history has a long range perspective. It ultimately passes stern judgment on the tyrants and vindicates those who fought, suffered, and were imprisoned and died for human freedom against political oppression and economic slavery. Many other leaders within various union organizations, including his rivals in the AFL, also spoke at the funeral, as well as leaders within the Socialist Party of America. Jack Reed also spoke at the funeral, ending with a speech with some of Haywood's quotes. If the workers are organized, all they have to do is put their hands in their pockets, and they have got the capitalist class whipped. A strike is an incipient revolution. Many large revolutions have grown out of a small strike. Remember that you are fighting more than your own fight. You are fighting for the entire working class, and you must stand together. I already miss him. Well, maybe I don't. But some people do. I just want everyone to get together and have a good old training session with our submarines and our carriers. Is that too much to ask for? So, Southern Democrats align with the, the AFP. So, the South has long been considered the heartland of the Democratic Party. But this may not be the case for much longer as polls show a massive spike in voter registration for the AFP. On a radio broadcast, Huey Long spoke at length about our Share Our Wealth program and its plans for America. It seems that the AFP is growing stronger by the day. Oh my goodness, that ain't good. We'll go disperse because that feels best to me. Woo! Lots of events. And we're not even, we're only in June 4th, June 5th. Man, we're gonna have to make this a little longer than what I expected it to be. Whatever. That'll be alright. And deploy the National Guard. That looks pretty good. Yep, we gotta deploy more funding to the National Guards, even though we probably can't afford too much. And that's okay. You know if that's the case? I want at least one division. Oh god, the great heat wave. So heat wave struck the continent of the US and Canada. The most severe heat wave in the modern history of the US or North America, the Great Heat Wave, started in late June and went up to over hundred degrees Fahrenheit as the drought conditions worsened due to a lack of continued lack of rain. Over hundred degrees Fahrenheit isn't that bad if you lived in the south. Now in July the heat has reached an all time record, and steel North Dakota temperatures have reached 121 Fahrenheit, which is actually probably extremely hot in South Dakota. In Ohio temperatures have reached 110, which is pretty hot which was close to tying a record high it's at 1934. This comes in a time of major political unrest with the American First Council, a major force in Midwest politics, and socialist and syndicalist forces gathering strength in the Great Lakes region. The drought is continuing and over 3,000 reported deaths have been linked to it. Many people are suffering from heat stroke and heat exhaustion. Farmers across the continent saw their worst har harvest on record, causing corn and wheat prices to skyrocket. And this heat wave does not seem to be giving up anytime soon. This just ain't our year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I would probably say over 100 degrees anywhere is probably pretty hot if it's not the south. So, if it's like 120 in North Dakota, we got some serious flipping problems. And yeah, it is summer. I don't think I've ever heard of North Dakota getting over 120 degrees or 120 period. So, I'm going to bring out the National Guard next. The National Guard has been deployed for over six months now, fighting to maintain security in a number of American cities. But there's a growing fear that many commanders within the Guard are not entirely loyal to the Republic. That many harbor sympathies for the AFP and the SBA. More focus needs to be put on the strengthening of the units that we know are loyal. We know also need to decide where to put focus our deployment for the time being. Restoring order in Iowa or Tennessee? Do we want to lose Tennessee or do we want to lose Iowa? Six. So that's unlocked. Five factories. I really just want to get kill off the CSA. Even though it's probably better to do this. Uh, Iowa. So, Red Summer. The heat, summer heat is turned into violence and blood of cities. Starting with Charleston, South Carolina, throughout the country engaged in bloody racial riots where whites beat up blacks and burn black businesses. The number of lynchings that occurred throughout the country spiked during the summer in response to the African Blood Brotherhood and other members of the SBA and CSA asserted arm a CSA and start began arming and fighting back. The Socialist Party of America has defended their actions and furnished blurry photos claiming that they show AFP members in lynch mobs. The CSA I mean there's we have the IWW but still. Uh the Tariff Act, I'm gonna go with reconciliation with Canada. The isolationists are related by the cost of relations with Canada. We can try to rebuild those relations by offering a compromise. Some assistance from Canada now, with the debt deferred until after the war, in exchange we'll reduce the import of tariffs from the end on cons. It's going to piss off other people. Oh my god. Gone with the wind. 
Margaret Mitchell published no, today her novel, Gone with the Wind, which immediately became a bestseller and may be nominated for the next Pulitzer Prize. Even Hollywood is taking notice and is planning a film adaptation to be released next year. So in the Old South during the, Civil American, during the American Civil War, many sees it as an analogy for the strained political situation in the U.S. Many America first Southerners claim the novel supports their cause. Cool. And the White Zone over China. I'm not going to read this. Quite an adventure. If you want to read this, go right ahead. Cool. Good readings, guys. Yeah, good, good readings. MacArthur speaks to Hoover. He has spoken to Hoover privately about a contingency plan called War Plan Y, where a military plan for dealing with a possible armed uprising of U.S. citizens. The plan will call on MacArthur to take emergency action to protect the country and re erect old barricades in Washington, D.C. This plan can be engaged even from outside Washington, D.C., at the Washington Arsenal. While the plan has obviously not been made public, we at least have a contingency plan if the radicals enact one of their revolutions from within the government. Let us hope that it is not needed. Actually, I probably need to figure out which one. Because eventually, we're going to choose someone here. Oh, maybe Garner. Oh, we'll also have Garner over here. Because direct economic... Eh, we'll see what... La Alf Landon. We didn't choose Floyd Olson, so we're not going to have the Velvet Glove. Direct economic intervention... We might do that, but we'll probably end up doing Austerity Through the Storm or the Iron Fist. I'm not really sure which one it is, but we'll see what happens. And we have, wow, well, five for Republicans, and then moderate Democrats, eight. Conservative Democrats are a total of 15, or just, you know, Democrats in general, 15. America seems divided. Liberia asked for aid. The Liberian government, crippled by the effects of Black Monday on top of their own overwhelming national debt, has sent an envoy requesting the American government assist with a bailout. We have our own issues to deal with, but the amount they desperately need is small by comparison, and will guarantee us a continued ally in Africa. If, if we really care how should we respond, of course we'll help. They're on their own. Eh, come on over. Or don't come on over, we'll help you out. Stay over there, but we'll help you out with, with your economy. Royal Siam. Parliamentarian Siam. Cool. That's August 1st, finally. Royalist. Poland elects a new king. The regency's finally over. The Boroa Det Rebellion. What the heck? Oh, there's Cambodia. Hello, Cambodia. Do you need Focus Street? It might. Nope. It appears not to be one. Royal as I am. Battle of the Overpass in Detroit, Michigan. The automotive capital of the world. Walter Reuther and Richard uh, Frankenstein, the leaders of the UAW Association, called a general strike against Ford Motor Company and proclaimed themselves for unionism, not Fordism, demanding higher pay and fewer hours for automotive workers. At 2 p.m. today, a photographer from the Detroit Free Press asked to take a photo of the leaders of the UAW standing on the overpass with a Ford sign in the background while they were opposing a group of 40 men from the Ford's service department approached them from behind and began to beat them with their batons. The group then continued their attack on some of the beret-wearing women present to pass out leaflets. This will hurt us more than hurt the unionists. Cool. Sorry, I'm slurring my speech now because there's just so much to read, my friends. Oh, my goodness. And MacArthur's plan. MacArthur has raised a solid point. New York City and Texas are two of our most vital and vulnerable strongholds. MacArthur has a plan which could see one of these areas secured, should the violence es escalate into a full civil war. You know what? As much as I love Texas, we might need New York. So, the Canadian government has reluctantly agreed to the compromise, giving us what repayment they can now, and accepting the deferment until the home islands have been taken, or retaken. In exchange, the trade agreement has been put in place with the Entente, something that's likely beneficial for all of us. The main downside is that the agreement has been viewed as treachery by both extreme parties, both which claim our government has betrayed the very people they fired up only moments before. Oh, look at that, that political power. Nice. Rally public support. Can I do anything with that political power? That'd be kind of nice. But it don't look like it. Um, social liberalism, more weekly stability. That's that'd be a waste to choose. So now we could have New York. Uh, violence reaches political theaters. That's cool. For some time, the violence has been mostly between the supporters of the radical parties. However, recently, the violence is now reaching the candidates and politicians themselves. Failed attempts on the lives of both Huey Long and Jack Reed have occurred in the past few months. Both gunmen shooting from a crowd both failed and both result in higher security. Several more local politicians have been stabbed during a campaign rally. Moreover, voters from both extremes are turning a blind eye to the violence done to their enemies. Great more violence. So, New York. Got a little bit of steel. Civilian factories, military factories in New York City has plenty of dockyards and a little bit of oil. Texas, though. Good God, you gotta love Texas for its fuel. Jesus Christ. It's so fuel rich. Well, I want to keep Texas as much as possible. But I want to make sure that we keep New England. If we hold on to New England... That might, that'll probably just guarantee us victory in the, the Civil War. To be honest with you, if we keep New York, you know, New Jersey, speaks Huey Long. The normal two-party system, parties, were just like the old two-patent medicine drummer that used to come around our country. He had two bottles of medicine. He played the banjo, and he'd sell two bottles of medicine. 
One of those bottles of medicine was called High Popularium, and another one of those bottles of medicine was called the Low Popularium. Finally, someone asked around if there's any difference in these bottles of medicine. He said, oh, considerable, they're both good, but they're different, he said. That high is made from the bark off the tree that's taken from the top down, and that low is made from the bark that we take from the root up. And the only difference that I found between the Democratic and the Republican leadership was that one of them was skinning you from the ankle up, and the other one from the ear down when I got to Congress. Homily saying he's not win elections, but is he really wrong? We can all agree and disagree on things, but is he really wrong? This is a capital ship. What the heck? Uh, you know, I don't even know what to make now. Um, there you go. Have fun with that. Good luck. That's all I gotta say. Just good luck. Cool. I'm trying to get this as far as we possibly can because I want to get to the Civil War by the next episode. Ah, radio. Cool. Radar, I'm also do that. Just let it go, time go on. MacArthur's plan, that's going to be a very, very important plan. So yeah, if we can defeat, or not even have the CSA rise up, um, and just focus on like the South, and we have New York with us, that's pretty good. So many Republicans and Democratic representatives have announced that this year will be the last year in Congress. Well, many retirees claim old age. Come on, get over there. Come on, I gotta read. Uh, old age motivated them. Rumors of gang intimidation by the extreme parties, or, uh, which have their own congressmen, it reminds many of the congressional brawl between Charles Sumner and Preston Brooks. This unprecedented rate of their retirement only gives hope to the radical parties that they can win these open elections. But the great heat wave is over. People from Vancouver and LA to New York and DC let out a sigh of relief as the great heat wave of 36 has come to an end and now coal front has spread over North America. It will come to be known as the United States' deadliest natural disaster of the 20th century, with an estimated death toll reaching 5,000. But even as the heat wave ends, a new chapter of American history is about to begin. At least it is over. And China is exploding, but you know what? What else is new? China is going kaboom. Shandong Click. It looks like the league has died. I kind of hope Royal Siam does win. That's kind of cool. They have their own unique focus tree, and then Parliamentarian Siam, though. The Bai Luang. That's pretty cool. And they have the same kind of tree, too. MacArthur's plan. So there's a growing disconcern that America is descending into a possible civil war. That despite all our efforts to maintain security, supporters of the AFP and the SPA simply have too much influence in some parts of the country. Mac MacArthur has unveiled a plan to infiltrate carriers in either New York City or Southern Texas. Both are of high importance, New York for its industry and Texas for its oil. Both are at high risk to take over. MacArthur says that these efforts might come to naught if the AFP and SPA's power become too great, but it leaves that it will greatly increase the government's chances of maintaining control should it come to an armed conflict. New York... Uh... I'm gonna go with New York. I love Texas. Well, some parts of Texas, not all of Texas, trust me. But, uh, hmm. New York. I want all of New England. I really want all of New England. So, we, we're done with this path over here, finally. Let's do War Department expansion. The U.S. War Department has seen a shrinkage over the last half decade through austerity measures. Now it's vital that staffing be extended and innovated, or new innovators enter the department ready for reform. Which is a great thing. Uh, since we're here, uh, we're probably using carriers this campaign, so let's just go and do that. Base strike, plus 50% port strikes, plus 20 carrier organization, that sounds pretty good to me. I'm going to save a lot of political power up, because we're probably going to need it. Hey, we've got a good amount of artillery. So, violence between the extreme radical parties and a number of major cities. Conflicts between supporters of the radical parties have broken in, out into violence. Partisans, fist fights, and even shootouts are starting to become a regular occurrence throughout the nation as the country spirals even deeper into chaos. While public eruptions are easier to counter, the enclaves these radicals have cut out of city blocks run on craft are harder to stop. Good. They're killing each other. Ah, the fruits of the open door. I love it. What are we still, are we still building? Eh, we're doing okay-ish. At least we built like at least one civilian factory here. That's kind of nice. Y'all, well, y'all come over here. It's fine with me. Keep training, even though y'all probably... Not training enough. Enough. Fighter ones. Oh yeah. There you go. That should be pretty good, right? More guns, please. More, 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 more guns. We gotta get these divisions out before we end up in uh, any potential conflict, as some might say. And yeah, expansion. So that's the US Army. You know, if you want to read this, go right ahead. But we don't have time to really read all this, so it'll have to suffice. Cool. It's just not in a great status right now. That's pretty much all you really need to know. And the U.S. Navy. And the American Navy, an institution whose history is so deeply interwoven that with that of the nation as a whole, has been in state decline after years of neglect. No more. We must again turn our attention to naval affairs. Well, that's what we are already doing. We got some dispersed industry. 
Uh, we could do that. 37 though, it's a little bit ahead of time. Ah, it's good, just do it anyways. That'll be alright. The three left, one left, that's not bad. Focus on more of the important stuff here. I'm not even going to import stuff, it really won't matter at all. But at least finally, we can do more here. And we won't have an election very, very th soon. Soon. Ah, right, here we go. The results are finally in from what's probably been the most ideologically contested presidential election the U.S. has ever witnessed. None of the four major parties have secured enough votes in the Electoral College to outright win the presidency. And as a result, the HOR once again has to vote on the winner of the election. This is probably not the end of our problems, but for the time being, victory goes to... Um, Alpha Landon, Republicans, John Hans Gardner. I'm thinking I probably want to go with... Let's go back over here. I'll steer through Storm. What does that one do? Bailouts? Uh, I don't know about bailouts, man. The Iron Fist, Socialist Party, are just purely secessionist groups whose organization must be ended at any cost. That sounds like fun. So we need to have Alpha Landon or John Hans Gardner, or we can do this one. Austerity through the storm. Uh, this means combating both. To see measures enforced. Well, we get the option if we choose Gardner anyway, so let's go with Gardner. Democrats, I'm going to go with him too, because I don't want to select the Republicans, because they only have 2% party popularity. And the Democrats have at least 15. And that's one of the most, if you combine these two, that's some of the most that have it, so we're going to go with John, Nance Karna, Cactus Jack, which I don't know why they select him as a leader already, which doesn't make sense since it's not even his, he's not even been elected yet. Well, he's been elected, but he's not in power yet. Um, but cool, this, I think this video's gone long enough, so if you enjoyed today's video, consider leaving a like. Subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I will see you tomorrow when we are going to go as far as we can to the Civil War. Anyways, if you want to read this, go right ahead. And I'll see you all tomorrow and have a great rest of your day.